are finishing up week two. We already did Caesar, so we're going to do bulbs real quick because it's actually a pretty short code. However, there are a couple complicated lines in it. In particular, two or three of the ten lines are actually something that you guys might not be familiar with. So we are going to take a moment to review what those do and help you guys accomplish that. All we're doing in bulbs here is helping code messages like they do on stage. It's actually a pretty short code here. I did start off with our notes, so those are already here for us. We are going to get right into it because, like I said, there's only about two or three lines that are somewhat complex. I'm going to write those lines out as usual, and then we will be going over them to explain what they do. Now, in this code, we already have our string library, so we don't have to import it. So we're just going to do string message equal to get string is message, right? So this is the message that we're inputting. And put a space there, close that out, and go ahead and end that. Now we need to loop through, so let's go ahead and put this note here. So we're going to loop through uh, each character in message, right? So we're going to go ahead and begin our for loop. So for where int i is equal to 0 and n is equal to the string length of the message. When i is less than n, i++. Plus plus. And that will help begin our loop going through each iteration, right? So let's go ahead and open that up. We'll get rid of this now. And what we're going to do is this portion here. We're going to convert each character to binary and print each bit as a bulb. So for character, we're going to call it C equal to message i and we're going to open another for loop here to get the current character from the message so let's do for int j bits in byte minus one j less than or equal to zero and we're gonna do J for the first time minus minus okay so let's get that for loop open and now we're going to extract the jth bit from the character by shifting right J bits so jth being like the second or third but jth because J is the identifier that we're using here so for int bit equal to C and this is going to be a unique line here that you guys probably haven't seen yet and one and then we need to print the corresponding light bulb emoji for the bit and let's go ahead and mark that as bit move that out and we will actually this is closed too soon my apologies print bulb bit close that out and then we just need to print our new line right print f backslash n semicolon and let's close that quote out right there and get rid of that right there so what are we doing here first let's talk about this code right here okay so what we're doing is we are initializing a loop variable that we're calling j to the value bits in byte minus one which is the index of the most significant bit in this case the leftmost bit in an 8 byte bit and then it continues looping through while j is greater than or equal to zero in decrements by j right by one on each of them so instead of going up it's going down because the most essential or significant bit in this case is going to be bit seven and ending with the least significant which is going to be bit zero so this allows us to extract each bit from the byte and print the corresponding light bulb emoji for that bit so now let's take a look at this line here first let's go ahead and change this to an because it looks like I missed that because it's and one or ampersand and what we're doing in this bit of code right here is we are 
we have a symbol stored in the variable called c, right? We've character c right here. And the variable j is a number between 0 and 7 that tells us which bit we want to extract from that character. We have that predetermined. And we work our way to the right down to bit 0. This is your shift operator. I think they went over that in the lecture. I don't really remember, unfortunately, so it's not less than, less than. It's actually shifting to the right. So it makes each bit in character C and then shifts them to the right a certain number of places. And that could actually be a number, but in this case, that number is J, which we have right here decrementing instead of incrementing, right? So that the shift is going down by the J number. Then we have our AND symbol, which is the bitwise AND operator. So it takes two bits and compares them, returning one if the both bits are one and zero otherwise. So in this case, we compare the result of the right shift operation of the number, which has a binary representation of like seven zeros and a one. And this has the effect of masking the result of the shift operation, extracting only the rightmost bit. Finally, we take that AND operator, which is either a zero or a one, and the value that's stored in bit, and that gives us the value of the bit we want to extract from the character. And we then use that value to print the corresponding light bulb emoji, which is going to be 0 or 1 or off or on. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So make bulbs. All right, let's see here. We've got an error on line 12 and 18. So let's go ahead and take a look at 12 first. It looks like I didn't close that out. So let's go ahead and do that see if that fixes our error there because it's not picking up the string here so it should say string message and then declare message and then also it looks like I put one too many s's in message just a little bit of a typo there so let's go ahead and try that again make bulbs all right so let's go ahead and check our style guide real quick go ahead and get rid of this and we'll check it again perfect and let's run our check on it and there you have it guys congratulations on completing week two of this is cs50 that was bulbs i am devin you are awesome thanks for your support like subscribe comment any questions you have and i'll get back to you guys we'll see you in week three